Talk to me, Cat Parsons. <laughs> no, talk to me about talk to me. I mean, talk to me. Talk to okay, me. Okay, but I have to tell everyone that while that song was playing, Kia was doing an amazing rendition of her <laughs> own, playing the piano on the. Uh, she right. had her little singing going. <laughs> it was nice. I'm sorry that you guys couldn't all see that. <laughs> I'm not. Oh God. <laughs> okay, so talk to me. Yes. Um, you know, it's it's a very. Um, it's a perfect name for an album by me, for oh. an EP by me, because I like yes. communication a okay. lot. And um, so uh, I, what I did was I actually um, recorded this with some great people, Warren Hewitt and Robin Holden, who've done some amazing work with um, Aerosmith. And mm -hmm. he's working with Aerosmith now. He did The Fray, mm -hmm. and Howie Day and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I won a contest, which was really cool, on OurStage.com, which is a really neat website, mm -hmm. where I got a song produced by um, by Mike Flynn, the head of A&R at Epic Records. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited about, about getting that out there. And it's it's really, you know, a, a rock song. And yeah. it's kind of my first... Uh, first real rock song, I feel like. And hopefully, it's so, so fun. Right. Hopefully, Sad and Lounge, hopefully you've gone... Uh, uh, to her website, catparsons.com, and, and downloaded the uh, title single, Talk to Me. Uh, I know it was a gift that you gave us last month. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's still available. It's mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy to share that with people, and I would love it if they go and they can get it for free. Just enter their email, and then they'll get the track sent right to them. Well, let's talk about why you are here. Um, talk to me is releasing today yes <laughs> well it has released today it I released mean, today i'm so excited <laughs> and you have been anticipating well we have been anticipating this uh, I uh have project been too. for some time <laughs> um you have been i call it being in the lab and <laughs> writing and and pulling all of your influences and pouring your heart out on this project um, it would seem that your songs are autobiographical. Uh, Mostly, yes. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to write that way, or is it therapeutic for you? Um, it is. Expressing myself is really important to me, so mm -hmm. um, I don't find it difficult to write that way. Occasionally, I can feel a little shy about sharing a song the first couple times I share it, mm -hmm. because I really am exposing myself. Yes. And I'm oftentimes exposing something I feel insecure about. Mm -hmm. And so um, that can be a little scary. You know, the last thing you want is for someone to feel bad for you. You yeah. know, like, oh, that's, you know, mm -hmm. poor thing. She's so effed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> So talk to me is, is talking about someone throwing your heart away? Is that what we're... Do what? we need to go and get the posse and handle this for well, you? Well, the story I like to tell about Talk To Me is that um, yes. when you're a singer-songwriter and you're in a relationship, yes. what's really great is you can define the relationship with a song. So, right. say the relationship doesn't go well or, you know... You don't think the person did right by you or, you know, whatever. You get to tell your side of the story. Yes. And then you get to package it and distribute it to all of your mutual friends mm -hmm. so that it is the definitive way that the relationship went. Okay. And um, in this situation, I had written a song. This song talked to me and I was dating another singer-songwriter. So this is when this process breaks down. Oh. And, um, you know, we were we were having a, um, a really intense relationship and... We there was a breakdown in communication, and so I had written this song. Just really, um, it's a very plaintive song, you know. It's a longing for to be let in, you know. Right. What's going on? There's something going Open on. Up. You know, yeah. there's something going on. Right. But they're not talking to you. Right. They're not telling you what it is. And all you want to do is just be let in. You just want to be closer. You just want to understand yes. what's happening for them, even if what what is happening for them is bad news, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's still better than just not being shut out you know the walls yeah mm -hmm. but so the funny part of it is i wrote talk to me and um then i posted it um online and when i just did you know a, a recording just myself and at my apartment and he posted a song back called oh. talking to you oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> which You're wasn't kidding. very nice oh my gosh <laughs> Was it well? Was he at least tactful in his approach? <laughs> no, was he pretty raw. No, man. <laughs> and then I wrote back a song that has too many expletives in it for me to ever play it live. But I, 
always like to say, suffice to say that I won. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is, I, I'm so not laughing at your pain, but this is hilarious. So we have you know two what, songwriters. I think it's really funny too. <laughs> an answer to each other musically. This yeah. is something else. Battle of the bands, right. literally. <laughs> Well, as long as your songs and your music got you through it, you seem very healthy. And uh, if he's listening, I would love to say she's uh, uh, looks like she's kind of washed you out of her hair. In my opinion, I'm just <laughs> saying. I don't mean to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, ultimately, it was a growing experience, and um, and actually, I am actually friends with the guy now. So. Okay. <laughs> This particular EP, um, we are later this year. We're going to hear a few more singles from that. Is that correct? Yeah. One of the titles really stood out to me, and I just kind of wanted to know what you meant by it. Uh, differently means what? Um, differently, um, is there's a lot of pressure to, uh, I have felt a lot of pressure to reach some sort of markers of adulthood, you know, okay. own something, mm -hmm. be in a relationship, yes. have a family, yes. um, you know, be financially stable, <laughs> okay. you know, mm -hmm. all those kind of things that are markers of success or markers of um, what a, a full life looks like or mm -hmm. what kind of uh, uh, accomplishment looks like. Right. And um, my life has been different than that. My life has... I've, I've chosen a different path for my life. And, um, you know, we all have. Mm -hmm. Our lives, none of our lives have taken the path that seems to be prescribed right. in movies or right. um, in pop culture right. or, you know, whatever. And so it's um, kind of working out the dissonance between what you thought life would be mm -hmm. and what life is. Right. And being good with that, you know, being exactly. okay with that. There's and, always room for diversity for instance you can't go outside and see one mountain and it's the same as the other mm -hmm. or one tree and it's the same as the other uh and the creator of it all mm -hmm. whomever that is for you uh -huh. obviously uh, is a huge fan of diversity and so i think that the world in general needs to wrap their hands around that wrap their minds around that mm -hmm. wrap their hearts around that so that we can have enough room for the diversity of things so that people can really fulfill exactly what they're supposed to do and i love that you have stood up in your own individuality to just walk this creative path when you've obviously touched so many lives well, um, I hope so. It's kind of valuing more than just uh, kind of what's been pushed on us, you know, a quality of life that allows you to take care of yourself, take care of your body, take care of your mm -hmm. needs and your emotional right. you know, self, or to, you know, just really balanced in that way. And mm -hmm. sometimes that looks different than, um, than what other people consider to be success. So... There's so many wonderful, like I was saying to you earlier, the LGBT community is amazing yes. and so vocal and so supportive and so loving and so loyal. Oh, yeah. Um, so you just have to find those people. It's like in our lives, you know, we're not going to be right for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, my music's not going to resonate with everyone. Um, there's going to be some people that hate it mm -hmm. and some people that love it and some people that fall in between. And what the trick is, is to find the people who you fit with. Mm -hmm. You know, find the relationships that where the person's part of your tribe, you right. know, right. stop looking at the people who aren't, you know, don't bother. Don't bother with them. There's that. so many people in this world and there's so many people in your tribe and you just have to find them. So find them on Twitter, you know, yes. find them on Facebook, find them on Satin Lounge, find them, <laughs> you know, con contact Key Renee. Hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you're talking about supportive um people who help uh, cultivate your career and help stand beside you and help kick start you. Yes, no thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, just tell um, the Satin Lounge and, and your listeners uh, and fans um, about your Kickstarter program and your describe a little bit about what they've been up to and how amazing they are. Well, so um, this is my second time. I guess what they're calling it now is crowdfunding. Okay. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Kickstarter, what it is is it's a platform um, in which you can harness all of your fans together and they can contribute towards a recording or towards mm -hmm. promotion or mm -hmm. you know whatever you've set out that you need um you need a budget for and then you give rewards so 